well, that's a bunch of crap. And I actually told him that. It'd be one thing if there was some sort of QC process. That Before you go out and buy this guitar, you're going to want to watch this video. We're going to talk about a lot of things you might be concerned about. First, let me start off with what's happening, good people. A lot of people have been asking me when I've been doing some of my gear reviews if I could play something with humbuckers. So I started scouring the internet for budget-friendly guitars. Well, that wasn't necessarily true. I had a bunch of rewards from Musician's Friend, so I hopped on over to their website. So that was mistake number one. But we'll, actually, we'll cover that in the middle of this video. I went for the cheapest Epiphone Les Paul that I could find, and this was actually supposed to be a, a gear review of my new slab of wood with humbuckery goodness. Instead, I'm here to tell you why you should probably avoid the Epiphone Les Paul Special One Limited Edition electric guitar in worn gray or any other color for that matter. I'm gonna do a playthrough of this guitar at the end anyway, kind of like an outro, so you could hear what it sounds like, because we're mostly gonna keep this anyway, completely stock, so that if we do like any future videos of like expensive guitar amps, we could do expensive guitar amp with a cheap ass guitar. First of all, the name appears to be inaccurate. Worn, I thought meant that it didn't have a lacquer finish, as you could see. I'm not really a fan of relicking, but don't get me wrong, if you're into that, that's pretty cool. But I'd like to earn those battle scars. But that's another topic for another video. Back to the wornness. It really looks like my nephew took his Matchbox cars and just rolled over the back and front of it. it. Does a bunch of little, tiny little divots, dents, pits, potholes, whatever you want to call them, on top of and the back of the guitar itself. But the paint is evenly finished. So if those were scars that were from a belt or bouncing it off of things over years, the paint wouldn't be so uniformly neat. So I got to wondering why the guitar was made this way. And I remember that Epiphone had a line, they called it the Satin, I believe, series. And it was a bunch of guitars that looked like they were burst, like uh, tobacco burst and cherry burst, but they also weren't finished but they did look smoother in appearance. So I think, and this is just speculation, what happened is they had a whole bunch of sourced wood and then they came across a whole bunch of slabs that were just imperfect. This wasn't a deal breaker and we're gonna get to the concerns that prompted me to make this video. Uh-huh, the dogs barking in the background sound like it might be Amazon dropping off my new humbucker loaded goodness. Stay tuned to see a future video on what that might be but it's definitely not an Epiphone. Further inspection of the guitar, and I'll try to give you a close up here. One of the screws in the bolt on neck split the back of the neck. Now, this isn't something that's gonna happen right away, but over time, it's gonna be something that'll develop and cracks, they never get smaller. Being unsatisfied, I initiated a return right away. And remember that part in the video where I said that it was my first mistake? So I hopped on over to their website. So that was mistake number one. And I was purchasing it through Musician's Friend. And I know what you're saying. This guy's such a small YouTuber and he's already looking to burn a bridge with a major corporation. Well, I'm here to give you honest gear reviews and things to help you out. Not here for corporate promotions. Garth, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. Sorry for interrupting your regularly scheduled program, but we have a great announcement to make. We're actually going to be making this next week, but we want to give you, our hardcore viewers, our OGs, the ground level opportunity to get in before anybody else does. Since you're watching this now, before the announcement, you're probably one of those people. The first one is absolutely completely free, and it's a Discord. And if you don't know what Discord is, it's basically a, a chat community with a whole bunch of channels that are geared towards guitar gear, such as guitars, amps, effects, music theory, lessons, things that you're struggling with, and other bunch of topics to kind of build the sense of community that we're all looking for, with specifically what we're trying to do with this channel. And again, it's absolutely completely free to you, and you can join in. There'll be an invite actually in this video. The next one is a Patreon. And I feel a little awkward starting one right now, but I think I came up with a good model that helps you just as much as helps me create this channel and keep it going. Basically, I created a couple of tiers. Basically, the first ones 
are really just tiers that allow you to just say, hey, thanks for doing what you're doing. And they're very low monetary cost. And even the upper tiers, they're still great value for what they are. To give you a quick breakdown of this, there's several different tiers. And there's only, a, you know, for the OGs, we're calling you, a 100 maximum slots in each tier. And each tier has its own component of something that we'll give away. For instance, uh, effects pedals, once that tier maxes out, we're gonna give four away per year and the value up to $300. So for your cost of subscribing to that tier, you have a one in 200 chance of possibly getting a guitar pedal. And you're asking yourself, well, if it's a 100, why is it a one in 200 chance? Well, you'll see as we go on, the next tier is for guitars and you'll have a one in two chance once that tier is maxed out for getting a guitar that we review on here up to $2,000. And I'm not saying that we're gonna give away the Vicer's guitar for $100. Just, it's gonna be well worth it. It'll be over $1,000 worth of uh, guitars each time that we give away. And that again, you'll only be locked in 100. You'll only have one in 200 chance of getting that. Again, you keep on asking, why is it a one in 200 chance? Well, the last tier that we came up with is the tier that you'll be entered into both. And that tier is not locked in to how many uh, subscribers are in that tier, but it does correspond with that one. It may seem a little confusing, but once you look at it in writing, hopefully it helps you out. But if not, hit me up in the Discord. It's a great way to check it out. We'll go back to your regularly scheduled program and thank you for joining us. When I initiated the return, I was told by the representative that I would have to pay for it to be shipped back to them. And I know you're saying, this thing's damaged. I couldn't believe it myself, but yeah. And that's what knowing the policies and procedures or whatever for whoever you're buying from, you need to know. Because most places you would think would assume the cost, not them. And checked it on their website, and that's true. But that's not where this video ends. So hang on a bit, and I'll give you some suggestions so you don't fall into this trap. Now, back to the world's worst return policy. Well, that's a bunch of crap, and I actually told them that. It'd be one thing if there was some sort of QC process in between. There's a lot of things that could happen between the factory and the store and the store to here. I also told them that I'll just wind up keeping a guitar instead because I'll probably get more mileage out of a video like this than sending it back to them and getting something else. The rest of the mistakes I can own up to, and I know I've been using a lot of quotation marks. Anyway, I didn't do my due diligence and scour YouTube videos and check out gear reviews of this particular model. Even though most of them aren't too recent, there was one that even the tuning peg was broken and practically falling off. And if you bought that from a certain retailer, you'd be out on the shipping cost of sending it back. I suggest you try to find recent reviews of any gear that you're looking to purchase prior to going out and buying it. But just also check out the reviewer to make sure that they're not a yes man and that everything is always perfect and great. Because when you get something from somebody, sometimes it's cherry picked and it's in pristine condition. And I bought this right off the rack. And hey, let me know if there's any particular piece of gear that you're looking for and you can't find a review on it. Maybe I could do one in the future. Another one of my mistakes was that I didn't even look at any of the reviews. I was just fixated on the price. I had enough rewards to cover it. It only cost me like 12 bucks to have it shipped. So I said, why not? But had I looked at the gear reviews on this particular item, I would have noticed that there was a lot of faults. And I suggest not only just looking at that website that you're looking to purchase it from, but go to multiple ones because you'll get more information. Sometimes they may only have five reviews on one particular page, but there might be another seller that has 200, so you can get a better grasp on what you're actually looking at. Next, my intention was to buy the blue version of this, and obviously I clicked on the wrong link anyway. But when I was looking at the pictures, it looked pretty good. Scrolled through them, couldn't notice anything in particular that any of the graininess or these pop marks or whatever you want to call them. But when you take the white one and look at it and zoom in, you could see it. You can see a little bit in the red, and if you really look in the, at the black one too, you could see it too. So I also suggest that whenever you're looking at a particular model, if that same one has different pictures, zoom in, 
preferably on a computer, and make sure that there's no blemishes. Lastly, be aware of the fine print. Some charge restocking fees, so if you weren't impressed with it and you just wanted to send it back, you'd be charged a 10, 15, some of them even have 25% restocking fees. Lose a piece of gear out of it in the meantime between shipping it back, they also charge you for that. And some of them have limited times, 30, 14, seven day return policies. So if you're away and you have this thing shipped to your house and the clock already starts ticking once it's delivered, thanks for watching this honest review. All opinions were my own and I was not paid to say anything. Actually, I paid for the guitar myself. If you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button. It lets YouTube know that I'm pretty cool. And I try to upload two videos a week for your viewing pleasure, so you won't be bombarded if you hit that notification bell. As always, you've been a fantastic audience and stay tuned.